The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network and our fine family of broadcast affiliates across Canada, the United States, Central America, South America, the Pacific Rim, 20 Asian countries, and in Europe. Our toll-free number is one eight seven seven five two eight eight two five five. That is toll-free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii. Email exxon at talkstarradio.com on MSN Messenger, talkstarradio at hotmail.com. And our website, which should be up in a couple of hours, www.exxonradio.com. My guest this hour is Marsha McMahon. She is an artist professor, psychic, and author. Marsha is listed in the Who's Who in the World for 2007. And we're going to be talking about communicating with Lady Di, Lady Diana, and uh, later on we'll be talking about channeling John Lennon. Marsha, welcome to the Exxon. How are you this evening? Marsha, are you there? Candle in the wind. That was lovely. Oh. Tell me... Um, when did you first realize that you were channeling Lady Diana, or Princess Diana? Yeah, um, and she goes by either name because, you know, after she got divorced and everything, she was still known in, as Princess of Wales, but a lot of people still mm-hmm. refer to her as Lady Diana, so either way. Uh, yeah, it was back in uh, 2001, um, and I had been doing a lot of prayer and meditation uh, prior to going into... Um, teaching job that I had. You know, I've always taught art. So um, I just was in the habit of doing that, and she came to me and asked me if I would be willing to be her ambassador of peace. And I thought, hmm, sounds interesting. I had no clue what she meant at that time. But that was in 2001, and I just simply write down the words as I get them. It's kind of like an automatic writing, but... Mm-hmm. Occasionally, when I when I read the messages, um, you can hear her voice come through. So I'm not a full voice channel, but um, I I am her channel, and I have been working with her on issues pertaining to world peace for some time now, about eight years. What was it like when you realized that you were channeling the one, the only Lady Diana? I have to tell you, I was just completely. Like, you know, well, of course, I had my doubts Mm -hmm. about myself. But then, you know, because of the way that she speaks in the Queen's English and because of the vibration that she had when when I was doing sessions with her, and what I mean by that is her feeling nature, it was so regal, elegant. You know, it was just a complete honor. But, you know, that was eight years ago, and, and, and now it's like she's one of my good buddies, I guess you could say. But she's still got that formal princess quality, and, and it was mind-boggling at first, yes. Marsha, please stand by. You and I have to take our commercial break. We'll be back in two minutes. Marsha McMahon is our very special guest, Exxon Nation. Her website is www.dianaspeakstotheworld.com. My name's Rob McConnell, and this is the Exxon on the Talk Star Radio Network, one 877 That's toll-free. Email exxon at talkstarradio.com. Marsha and I will return on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues right here on the Talk Star Radio Network from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada.
Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere, or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. Marsha McMahon is our special guest, and uh, Marsha, what uh, what did Princess Diana mean when she said, now is the time for all of this to be known? Uh, she was speaking specifically about um, the crash and the inquest and the revelations that still have not yet come to light. I was personally hoping that there would be more of a thorough investigation into the inquest because Diana has told me, well, for the past year or two anyway, that it wasn't an accident. Prior to that, I wasn't even going there with her particularly because when I would ask her, she wouldn't, she wouldn't go into it. She said it was too dangerous for me to know about. But um, apparently she's indicated that... Um, the situation is such that there will be changes coming up, possibly even this summer, and when they do, it will upset even the House of Lords and Commons, is how she put it. What kind so, of changes, or what kind of um, revelations will be coming up? Any idea? Well, uh, I think something about the crash and uh, the real truth of that, because, as you know, she wrote, uh, a letter to her butler in 2003, and that had remained in his keepsake for many years. And then when the Queen released him, then he released it to the tabloids, and they had a field day with that. But in that letter, it was true, and in my book, With Love from Diana, Queen of Hearts, she corroborates the truth of that letter. Of course, it was in her own handwriting. And she said that someone at the palace was trying to get her and then she identified the person, but since that um, identification in the tabloids, et cetera, et cetera, um, she has said in many of our conversations that really Charles had nothing to do with it. So apparently there was some kind of a plot. Apparently she 
she would like people to know that this was not an accident, and the inquest, she says, was a botched situation with the French investigation. Still, so she's saying that there will be some events, I think, in perhaps the changing of the guard at Windsor, something like that. I don't mean just the daily changing of the guard. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, mm-hmm. rulership over there. That something may happen, and when it does, then everything will be topsy-turvy. Why are diplomats still listening to Lady Di when it comes to the um, her messages of peace and to the world diplomats? Well, um, this is what she put me up to. When she asked me, did I want to be her ambassador for peace, I said yes. I thought, gee, that sounds like really interesting. She's such a great lady. Yes, I'll do your work, you know. Well, as things developed, um, she had solutions to uh, terrorism. She had knowledge of what they might be planning. As well, she had diplomatic, more importantly, I should say, than than terrorism, because that's a separate topic almost with with my work with Diana. Uh, But I did send a lot of warnings on anonymously. But then she asked me to contact various diplomats that she knew in life with her words from spirit, and she said it wouldn't matter whether they uh, believed in channeling. Mm -hmm. It was just important that they got the ideas because she has seen that over time, um, if we will work on establishing an Israeli-Palestinian peace deal, that that is one of the core grievances of the radical extremists, and that if we will do that as a world, as the United States, and, you know, and so on, that's a very hard hard thing to do because it's a, it's a very tall order. But I have, uh, you know, faithfully emailed many different diplomats, sent them my book, and been in close communication with one of them who held a very top position here in the United States. So he took her words, and he was very grateful. But he won't be coming out with any press conferences saying he listened to the spirit of Diana. <laughs> now, when Diana comes to you, how long does she stay with you? Um, she is um, always wanting to do a session about weekly politics and world affairs, and she's sort of looking down upon our world to prevent outright you know, destruction of mm-hmm. you know, nuclear holocaust, this kind of thing. So basically, she comes in about once a week, and I have to set aside time. And usually, if there's world events of unfolding or even about to unfold, she she will somehow, I don't know how to explain it, but I will simply know. Oh, today's the day I have to do my my session with Diana, mm-hmm. and and she gives wonderful words. I mean, I'd like to share some of the words. Please do. Given. Okay, um, so this is what she says about our work today. Um, and this, is, this was channeled uh, maybe a year or so ago, but um, she is saying, um, it is my job as an ascended master to help where I can, and the Middle East is my primary mission from my guides here. I was given a heart of love on the earth plane and a mind very developed on the spirit plane, more so than that when I had with to work on earth. I know many have doubted my words before, claiming I was nothing but a fashion queen. But I wouldn't have said I was to be forever queen of hearts without meaning it, even in life. I knew that I would reign only in the hearts of my people and did not suspect that I would reign only from the spiritual realms of heaven. However, my words were prophetic, and I stand on them still. A good queen watches over a kingdom and encourages peace and understanding. My gifts now have to do with peace, understanding, and diplomacy of a very sophisticated manner. We hope the human race has the mind to hear my words and follow my advice, which can save the human race more tragedy, terror, and death. I come now to all who call upon me as Diana, the Queen of Hearts, and I thank you for listening to me. One eight seven seven five two eight eight two five five is toll free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii. Um, they they're very strong words, very compelling words. Um, 
what is the what is the response from politicians, members of Parliament in Britain, and uh, you know people who can actually make these changes when you send them these words? Well, um, as I say, um, sometimes I get nothing back, you know, in the email. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you that uh, she has been she has put me up to this, and I have corresponded with three major world leaders. And they all have read my book. And I believe that the current person that I'm in contact in Britain is, is receptive to the words. And I believe that this particular person is in the perfect position to actually um, set the peace accord between Israel and Palestine and, and help them um, to create a lasting peace over there. So it's really weird how she went to spirit, you know, in 97, um, it'll be the 11th anniversary of her death, but yet um, these same people are still in positions of power in the world and knew her. So it's sort of like it worked out really well in terms of, you know, them being able to receive the words. Now, you know, I won't claim that they are following everything that she says 100%. I just feel that that they appreciate the, the correspondence and that it has helped and it has given the right ideas at the right time. And it's something that she's very intense about, the peace process over there. And she says she won't rest until there is a lasting peace solution there because with that one lasting solution, we can look forward to entering into what she calls the golden age where, where we will have peace on earth. There will be much, much more of it, much less of the government um, controlling the people in order to create the wars, et cetera, et cetera. But if we eliminate the, the core cause of terrorism, which is what she's trying to do, then there'll be a lot less suffering for the children of this world, whom she still stands with a lot. Have you been able to validate that the person you are challenging is indeed Lady Diana? Well, um, yes, I have in many different ways, and that's a fair question, and I get that a lot in my interviews. And I know that it's her simply because I've known her for so long and so much of what she has given me in my book, for instance, has come true. Mm -hmm. uh, so that part of it validates for me. But obviously some people are going to think this is a strictly subjective process. But I'll tell you that even in my book I have messages from quite a few other authors who also began channeling Princess. Diana at separate times from myself, those of her other channels, you could say, and they have sent me messages and emails from Diana with a special message about what I need to do next, or, you know, I skipped a message once, um, I had some crisis, and I skipped one of the peace messages, and she sent it through another channel, <laughs> and then, she's, wow. then she asked him to send it in the email, and that's printed in my book. So I've had plenty of, um, of other psychics that I've also had on my show who channel her, and we have exchanged um, messages, you know, volleyed back now, and forth. And now, has Lady Diana revealed why she was killed? Well, she has never said precisely, but I've been able to piece together a lot of it. I think that there are two facts to consider. One is that she was about to marry a Muslim, and she was a member, a former member of British royal family, and that might have been, and these are just theories, you know, because she doesn't say why, mm. but she knows for sure she was, and she doesn't go into the why or the who done it because, you know, this my work is not about a murder mystery or forensic work, and for that matter, she said that, you know, if I were to be too frank about things, get me in a lot of trouble. So basically, I don't know real specifics, but I do know that being on the verge of marrying Dodie that night may have had something to do with it. And then the other issue I feel is that um, she, in her last year of life, was very prolific in doing um, her wonderful work mm -hmm. with landmines going to these areas, and that did put a stop to landmines in both Britain and the U.S., and those were big businesses. All right, stand so, by. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Marsha McMahon is our special guest. Her website is www.dianaspeaks2theworld.com.
dot com. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Marsh McMahon is our, McMahon is our special guest, excuse me, www.dianaspeakstotheworld.com. And Marsha, tell us a little bit about the song that we're playing right now in the background. Yeah, and I'm going to read the lyrics, too. You were listening to Remarkable Diana, and this song, I have a connection to John Lennon as well, and some of his messages are printed in my book, With Love from Diana, but I host my own show, and I've been honored to feature also the, um, the music of John and George on my show every week. Now, I'm not a musician. I'm not doing the music. Uh, it's done by Bob Murray, but Bob and I have this connection, and... He also channels Diana. Well, he, he and I sort of started working on this project together, and he was doing the music, and then I found that when I would listen to the music, I would get the words. And so I have a, a book in the works with John Lennon, and this is uh, Remarkable Diana. Is there time for me to read some of these lyrics? Sure. Yeah, um, go right ahead. Yeah, so the song we were listening to was called Remarkable Diana, and it sort of goes remarkable in every way, in every way perfect. Diana, and I can't sing, so I won't sing the rest of it for you. Oh, come but, on. Karaoke night on the X Zone. Come on. Yeah, no. But then it goes shining light behind the peaceful planet. She shines and shines deep within. A princess so real and bright, a special person after my heart. A princess real and true, and real was she, living in love and peace, giving her stuff to the causes and the children. She gave her rose of life. A rose of life was she, a princess whom I had not met. Still here, but adored while watching her on earth, an earth angel for the children. Diana, sing a song of praise for her, beauty immortal. She is all that could be in England. What a miracle was she. Now this great light is in heaven here along with me. So those are the words from John Lennon Hmm. that go to the song. So I'm kind of looking for, you know, somebody who's interested in uh, taking my lyrics and Bob's tunes and, you know, at some point, Forming them. We haven't gone too far with it, you know, because we're both really busy and we're both sure. writers. But, um, you know, that that is the goal. And we have had a couple songs that were put to form, and they sounded really good. So oh. I know that Lennon is working through a lot of different people that have musical talent, and other people have contacted me, and uh, they've been on my show, too. So they feel mm-hmm. the inspiration, you know. Tell, tell me, what is, uh, what is the divine feminine, and how does the late princess uh, feel about, uh, feel uh, she embodied that? And oh, does, that's yeah. a wonderful question. I think, you know, as we all remember, Diana, she was always um, so smashing. I mean, she was so beautiful and mm-hmm. so stunning, and just that smile and that and all that she was was just wonderful. But, 
if I could read a little bit of her own words, I think it would really, um, uh, really define sure. it if there's time. So she's speaking here on the Divine Feminine. For as you all know well, the palace forbade me to speak openly. And when I did speak, for instance, about my marriage, then all hell broke loose. It is indeed high time for the Divine Feminine to be acknowledged and brought forth. For it will be women to end the wars that men begin, and women who lead the way in the new age for mankind. Women have the love within their hearts, as it takes a woman to do so many things for the world. Likewise, men will have to bend more to compassion, to truth, and to be allowing shared power for this new age, the so-called Aquarian age. I was a way shower in my life as Diana, and a superb example amongst the people of all that the feminine could truly accomplish. It was my honor to serve and to continue to serve for the benefit of all mankind, which is what I am doing with you in my message. For in our giving birth, we are nurturers of the spirits of men. In this case, of course, my fine sons, the Princess William and Harry. Interesting. T- tell me, why did Lady Diana choose you to, to channel through? Well, um, I believe that um, she somehow foresaw way down the bend that, that I would say yes to this, this big task that I've been on, uh, writing two books now with her and, and sending these messages of peace all around where they can do the most good. And I believe that she saw that I would be willing to do it and that I was a hard worker. And I sort of feel, too, that when a person from spirit, especially an ascended master or a, a higher angelic guide, chooses someone... They look into your personality characteristics, and the one thing that you have to be able to have is honesty and integrity, which, of course, she had so much about herself. So on certain um, traits, I think they look for people that are honest and that are going to do the work. Now, I believe that Diana's come through quite a few people on the earth plane since her transition to spirit, and a lot of people have received her but turned her down for whatever reason with the channeling. And some people have even written books and then forgotten about it and have completely abandoned her in the process of this, too. They've just given up because it's been hard for people to reach the the mass consciousness with Diana because she was such a celebrity. A lot of people go, they roll their eyes and they go, oh, you know, really now? So, you know, I mean, I think a lot of people get frustrated. I know of a lot of others that have channeled her that gave up. And I haven't given up, so I guess persistence is another reason. <laughs> but why would somebody like Princess Diana re- need more than one channel? Well, um, it's a good question, but she's very persistent on preventing these so-called nuclear holocausts and preventing future terrorism for the world. And, you know, the world is in a very precarious place. We have a lot of stuff going on on a daily basis um, that you know, could could be very potentially threatening all over the place. And so um, she has taken it upon herself to do the work through me anyway mm-hmm. with, with preventing terrorism and diplomacy and messages of peace in general. But I think her other channels have more about her personal side, although I have quite a bit about her personal side in my book. Um, some of them have just more details, say, about the crash or... Um, some of them have a message about her work with children. You know, it's funny, but, but every time I read one of her messages, they, they all still ring true. I guess you could say it's like, um, you know, when, when I'm talking to you and we have a conversation, mm-hmm. there's a certain, and, and by the way, I'm enjoying this conversation, and, and this is really going well, and I appreciate this. You know, it just seems to me like you have a certain way of presenting yourself, and for whatever reason, she wants, these channels to also bring forth that part of what she calls her tapestry. Okay, now do you also uh, communicate with Dodi Fayed? Yes, I do. Uh huh. And um, Dodi has come through a lot in the messages, and he has a really important message to his people, Muslims, asking them not to commit acts of terror in the name of Allah. And he doesn't get too political about things, but. I think in a general sense, I think that is a very good message. And mm-hmm. he's also been very encouraging to me. When I went to England to see the Diana sites and everything, um, he told me then to be very careful even in communicating with his father 
I know his father has a lot of grievances, and I only wish that Mr. El Fayed would would read my book and, and turn on to the messages and know that his son is well and with Diana on the other side and also involved in this work for peace. But, you know, I mean, his father's quite consumed with grief and understandably, so, you know, I've never been able to actually reach him. But, but Dodie's a very respectable person, and I think that, you know, had they had the chance to live, I think they would have done some fine work on the earth plane, and it would have been a good example, but even so, he's, he's got a very good message about the Middle East. Does uh, Lady Diana have any messages for her sons, William or Harry? Oh, yes, all the time, and um, she um, has posted, asked me to post many of the messages to William and Harry, for instance, about the revelations that she predicts will, will be breaking sometime this year in 08, possibly even this summer, uh, concerning the monarchy. Uh, her first message, actually, that she gave me was her message to William, and it is posted on the, the uh, called the site index of my website, where she, she was addressing her transition to spirit, and she was teaching William how to channel, how to connect to her, and saying that he had an awesome role to fulfill in terms of his world service, and that he had to learn to become one with humanity and not put himself above others. I mean, it was just like what the way she was in life with the boys. So she's got wonderful messages, and she had a recent message about Harry's uh, recent deployment over in Afghanistan, and she asked me to read it on my show once and asked everybody to pray for him. And then she kind of went silent on Harry, and apparently that's when he went to Afghanistan. So, yes, she does communicate with the boys. Uh, through my messages, and, you know, hopefully they, they've been on my site and read them, but, mm -hmm. you know, I have no way to verify whether, whether they're getting these messages. All right, let's, so, talk about, let's, talk, let's talk about John Lennon now. When did you start uh, channeling John Lennon? Well, um, actually, you know, I, I just suddenly I was working on an art project one time, and I was finishing up my first book with Princess Di, which is now out of print and sold out, and um, he was, I was just finishing up the editing on that, and I was having a hard time finding a, a publisher and everything, and he said something to the effect of, of, don't worry, he said, everyone will want to know your great words from Princess Di and Mother Teresa, and then he said, we make great music over here, but there are no producers to get it out, but he said, remember to listen to the Beatles now and then, because um, there's a lot, a great deal of wisdom there, and then when I got that message from him, it was so comforting, and I realized that he had been also you know, involved in this project, knew of this project, and then since then I've written an entire book with John and I regularly channel him. But I haven't published the book yet. I've just been too busy. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're, when you're channeling somebody like John Lennon, uh, you know, you're channeling two of the big heavies in, in history so far, Lady Diana and John Lennon. I know. <laughs> Why I you? know. Go ahead, Rob. Why you? Well, you know, there's a lot of people, actually, that channel John Lennon. Yeah, but do and, they also channel Lady Diana? Um, yes. This is, I mean, not everybody, obviously, but I've, I've recently had some guests on my program, uh, the McComber family, and um, they have a second book coming out, and apparently they do um, work with both, both of them. I think that both Diana and John are good friends on the other side. That I know. They're in the same circle. Apparently, when you move in celebrity circles on the earth plane, when you're, when you're in the heavenly realm, you move in celebrity circles there, too. It's like a little Hollywood on the other side, sort of. But these people also, you got to remember, John and Diana were taken out of this world before they were finished with their peace work, that the work that they wanted to do for world peace. And, of course, John Lennon, you know, it was really tragic what happened to him. And so, you know, he has been working on music ever since he crossed over. But um, now when, when George crossed over, which, which was very sad, of course, for the world, um, shortly thereafter they met up and they've been working together on, on doing all this new music that's featured on my radio program. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it's really an honor to, to work with these people. And 
it's nothing I could have invented in, in my wildest imagination. I couldn't have dreamt that I would ever hear from them, much less channel their music, you know. So I know that other people do, and other people have other connections to them for whatever reason. A lot of people, though, that do channel Diana have also heard from John, and other author, Robert Murray, who does the music that we listen to this evening, um, is, is totally connected to John Lennon. But he hadn't been doing any real messages with John. I was the one doing the messages, and he was the one doing the music. Well, then we, then we piled up, and I decided I would do the, um, the lyrics, and he would do the music, you know. So it's been a three-year project, though, and we're having a little bit of trouble getting it out to the earth plane, but John says, don't worry, the music is about to go big, <laughs> which I only hope for their sake, because they really want this music out on the earth plane, because John says his music can again influence the earth, get this, he has a bigger plan than I could ever imagine, and I'm no play in words, of course, but he really wants um, his music out because he says it will help world peace again. But why wouldn't John Lennon go to someone who is well connected within the music industry if he wanted to get this music out? Why would he go to someone who is a very uh, who's a novice in the music industry? It makes no sense yeah, to me. Yeah, well, fair question. I, I think a lot of these people that um, are in the music industry would would not ne never be channeling for whatever reason. And if they thought they were channeling John Lennon, uh, they might, you know, I mean, it just might be too much for them to handle. I mean, a lot of people that are, you know, doing this sort of thing, I don't know. They just don't. I mean, it's just like, why wouldn't Diana be channeling directly to the diplomats? Because diplomats don't spend time channeling, you know? So, I mean, mediums do this kind of work, and people that do music do music, and there are a few people that do music and also are mediums. Um, but, um, you know, I, I'm still looking for the right person to kind of put our music to form. So, you know, to tell you the truth, I honestly don't know, except that I know that when people ask you to do these projects on their behalf and they're, they're big names, they have bigger projects than just me and mine. They're not out to make me famous. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation. Whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials, how we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world.
Welcome back, everyone. I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking our guest tonight, Christine Nightingale. We talked about angels with Dita Wegman. We talked about the importance of sleep, dreaming, and prophecy. Brian David Anderson talked about, oh my gosh, we talked about uh, earth changes with Brian David Anderson and the New World Order. And, of course, Marsha Mac, uh, McCann, this hour, McMahon, we're talking about channeling Lady Di and John Lennon. Now, uh, first of all, uh, Marcia, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, who else have you channeled besides John Lennon and uh, Lady Di? Oh, I've, I've, well, I've opened up the spirit quite a bit in my channeling, and mm -hmm. because I host my show, I work with very high angels like Archangel Michael and the Heavenly Host. I've also channeled Jesus, and um, wait a sec, hold on here, back up. You channeled yeah. Jesus. Uh huh. Yeah, I have. Uh, yeah, for a long time I've channeled him. Yes, about as long as the same, maybe the same amount of time as Lady Di. And he's given me, oh, I have a Holy Grail series on I, I have to ask you, why do all these high-profile people go to you? Well, um, you know, again, I don't know. I just, they come to me with messages. And how, do you know, how, do you know, how do you know you're really channeling these people and not... Other people who are saying that these are Jesus, these are Lady Diana, these are John oh, Lennon. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the Diana stuff we talked about before, that, you know, I had a lot of corroboration. As far as the Jesus stuff, um, I had a past life with him recently that I uncovered in the last year, so there was always a closeness there, and I could always hear him in prayer. So I've, I've always walked with him. So, you know, I don't, I don't know. I just know, you know... Um, you have to go on the words that they give you, too, uh -huh. and does it contain the energy and the wisdom of Jesus, you know? And you look at the energy and the words, and when you look at it, you go, wow, I could never have said that. I could have never imagined that. So, you know, there has to be that that inner confirmation, too, Rob. And, and Jesus' messages are posted on the site index as well. He's given... Marsha, I'm sorry, but we've run out of time for tonight. I want to thank you very much for joining us. Oh, www. Dot, uh, let me see. Diana speaks to the world. Dot com. Wow. She channels Lady Diana, John Lennon. Uh, let me see who else. Uh, Sister Ter Mother Teresa, and uh, Jesus, and she's had a past life with Jesus. Well, there you go. Uh-huh. One eight. Uh -huh. I'll be back uh, tomorrow night, Exo Nation, uh, as, once again as we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the Exo. To my producer at Master Control, the lovely Supergirl. Thanks, Supergirl, for keeping us up on those four satellites in the sky, Galaxy 4R, Telstar 7, Aglia 2, and on G3. To my wife and senior producer, the lovely Laura Rogers. Thank you, sweetheart. Keith Friedman at Consolidated Streaming. And uh, to all the... To all you, the Exo Nation, thank you for allowing us to be part of your day, your night, no matter where you are on this great big world of ours. Send an email. Tell me what you think about our show. Tell me what you think about our guests, which guests you'd like us to bring back, and which guests you don't want to hear again. I'll be back tomorrow night at 10. So until then, if you have a child at home, give them a hug, give them a kiss. Tell them their love because they are the leaders of tomorrow. And always keep your eyes to the sky and your heart to the light. Good night.